really important a bit of instruction just came out from the U.S. Catholic Council of Catholic Bishops, uh, which sometimes is a little mealy-mouthed and sometimes is not as politically prudent as it ought to be. But here, the USCCB has said something really great. The Conference of Catholic Bishops has called on all Catholics to, quote, vote for candidates who will defend the life and dignity of the human person. The, the bishops have reminded Catholic voters that abortion remains, quote, a preeminent priority. It is morally imperative that Catholics, I think we could broader this all to, to, to broader this out to all self-professing Christians, must vote for the pro-life candidate. It is not possible to vote for a candidate who is, especially as we see in the case of Kamala Harris, extremely, radically, in principle, absolutely, in favor of abortion. You can't do it. There There are plenty of issues that Catholics and Christians broadly might disagree with Trump on. There are issues that I disagree with Trump on. But not all issues are the same. Just like all, not all crimes are the same. You know, jaywalking is not as serious as slaughtering a whole family. So too, not all political issues and political imperatives are the same. To quote John Paul II, life is not one issue among many. It is the, it is the fundamental right on which all of the other rights rely. If you are a Christian, you cannot vote for Kamala Harris in good conscience. It is not possible to do. And there is an even deeper political lesson here as the, as the Catholic bishops are talking to Catholics. If you want to do the right thing, you can't vote for Harris. And there are two candidates, really, and you should vote for Trump. But if you want to have political power at all as Catholics, you have to take this issue seriously. If you want to have any political voice at all, because there have to be certain, there has to be cohesion in order for a political voting block to have any power. If the political voting block just dissipates and votes according to all other uh, reasoning, then there just then there just isn't a Catholic vote. There isn't a Jewish vote, or there isn't a urban vote, or there isn't a suburban mom vote, or there isn't. You have to you have to actually vote together on certain issues in order to have any political power at all. Uh, we'll see if the Catholics follow suit. I think they should. Go to preborn.org slash Knowles. Every year, over 800,000 innocent lives are lost to abortion in America. It's actually higher now. It uh, had gotten down to about 800,000. Then with the abortion pill, it's now over a million. This is a tragedy that should weigh heavily on every heart. We are fighting against the Biden-Harris administration, which defends abortion. We are now seeing Democrat leaders like VP nominee Walls support infanticide after birth. This is the America that we are living in, folks. Go to preborn.org slash Knowles right now, where for just 28 bucks, less than the cost of a night out, you can potentially save a life. Your tax-deductible donation goes directly to defending the most vulnerable among us. That is preborn.org slash Knowles. What if you can't get to a computer? No problem. Simply dial pound 250 on your phone. Say keyword baby. That is pound 250. Say keyword baby. Your 28 bucks can be the difference between life and death for an unborn child. Let's show the Biden-Harris administration we won't stand idly by while innocent lives are at stake. Support Preborn today. This is an organization that I support personally. I encourage you to give what you can. Preborn.org slash Knowles because every life is precious and every life is worth fighting for. This is pretty spooky. The CEO of OpenAI, which is the company behind ChatGPT, this is Sam Altman, he is predicting that ChatGPT will be smarter than any human being in a few thousand Days, not a few thousand years, not a few thousand months, a few thousand days. That means what? Five years, 10 years, the chat GPT will be smarter than any human. He writes, this is a, a huge blog post on the future of intelligence, but I'll just read you a, a paragraph or two. In the next couple decades, we will be able to do things that would have seemed like magic to our grandparents. Our children will have virtual tutors who can provide personalized instruction on any subject in any language and at whatever pace they need. We can imagine similar ideas for better health care, the ability to create any kind of software someone can imagine, and much more. How did we get 
to the doorstep of the next leap in prosperity in three words, deep learning worked. It's not just that you got a bunch of geniuses programming computers to make cool stuff. We have actually cracked the code on how logarithmically to have machines learn to do stuff so that the machines just get better and better and better the more that they run. Final point, many of the jobs we do today would look like trifling wastes of time to people a few hundred years ago. You hear the, the, the worries about this new technology. They say, well, it's going to replace so many people in their jobs, and they're going to be out of work, and this is terrible. And, and Altman is saying, no, 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 look, there are a ton of jobs from the past that would look like a waste of time today, all right? And, and many jobs that we have today would look like a waste of time to people hundreds of years ago. It's just the society has radically changed. He says, nobody is looking back at the past wishing they were a lamplighter. If a lamplighter could see the world today, he would think the prosperity all around him was unimaginable. And if we could fast forward 100 years from today, the prosperity all around us would feel just as unimaginable. So you know that the lib response to this is, let's go, baby. This is awesome. Bring on the AI. Let me upload my consciousness. Let me become one with the Borg and plug into the matrix. This is great. Full steam ahead. And what's the conservative response going to be? The conservative response to this news is the West has fallen. It's all, we're all doomed. Billions and billions of people will die. Everything is terrible. The age of glory is over. And that's just, that's how the left and the right react to everything. But how ought we to react to this? It seems to me that AI, this major advance in technology, that has largely proven itself already, it it can be a good thing. It can be a bad thing. Like all major technological leaps, like all technology, I guess, just in general, it can be awesome or it can be awful. Nuclear fission, awesome, really cool, can do really great stuff like power civilizations quite efficiently, uh, maintain world order through imperial hegemony. Okay, that's good too. Or it can uh, blow up entire cities. Not great. The internet can allow us to connect to people, to educate ourselves, to work jobs and still stay with our families and can allow us to do lots of great stuff. Or we can look at and order drugs and do contract killings. You know, uh, you, you, the internet, it's one or the other. What is What is AI going to do? It could be used for good. It could be used for bad, which, which means the most crucial public education that we need right now is not in technology. That's what you're going to hear from all these people. We just need to train people to work with this AI. We need to teach people to learn how to code. We need to make sure that more students are studying engineering. That's the new public education need that is uh, brought about by AI. No, that's totally the wrong conclusion. This new technology means that the actual pressing educational need is not in technology, but in ethics. That's that's where we suffer from ignorance right now. That's what's going to be tested. That's what's going to determine whether the technology is a good thing or a bad thing, is if we possess the ethical know-how and discipline to use it well. If I were running a university or a high school or a, or a middle school or elementary school for that matter, and I saw AI on the horizon, this will happen, this is going to be a radical technological shift, this is going to change the way that we work and we live, and I agree with Sam Altman, I think all that's true, then the, the first thing I would do is reorder my curricula to make sure that students are being taught ethics, <laughs> how to deal with these things. Because if we don't have a proper ethical framework and good moral habituation and training, AI is going to destroy us. And if we do have some discipline and we do have some ethical know-how and we do think clearly through these issues, AI really could be the wonderful thing that the libs think that it could be. That was a great clip. Now hold up, ring the bell, subscribe to the Michael Knowles YouTube channel. We'll see you next time.